pleasure to meet y'all at last, and welcome back to Why Is That 2.0. And yeah, my voice is kind of running low, so I guess I'll have to call it off for a little while after this. But in terms of how I got questions coming on today, I've got yet another one to talk about. The question is about AVGN, Cinemassacre in general. And it simply says, Why is that you look up to James Duncan Rolfe as a big source of inspiration towards most of your creative input and most of your work. Now I feel like that that was a pretty darn good question right there. Out of the many that I have selected to be featured on Why Is That 2.0, I feel like it's probably about time that I simply go ahead and just put it all together. Considering the fact that I've actually been a really big fan of Cinemassacre itself, it was also one of the first ever YouTube channels that I've ever come across in my entire life. Of course, we've already known the story that the first ever several videos that I've ever come across would include, well, the first few being related to pugs, and then eventually me being directed to trains, model trains in general. And that, of course, is what led me to Miss Oliver and Blossom. One of the first ever popular YouTubers out there to really gain a name by creating an internet famous series that would in fact be spawned off of the inspirative input based off of Family Guide Homestar Runner. It's Miss Oliver and Blossom's Thomas and Friends Saga on YouTube. That was of course the first ever web series that I've come across at the time. That became very popular throughout its time. But as for Cinemassacre, going back to that, that became way better. Because, of course, I was able to come across the Monster Madness web series. And wow, it was incredible. I was able to know about certain films out there, including the original Dracula film from 1931, along with the original Frankenstein film from the same year, and plenty of others, like Creature from the Black Lagoon, An American Werewolf in London, Child's Play series, and much, much more up until that time. But of course, the real big picture about Cinemassacre that I really loved so much in the year 2008 was the Godzilla-thon. Yes. And it was that that eventually led me to becoming the Kaiju Force Neo that I truly am now. I've been a really big fan of the Godzilla universe because of that. So I give a big salute to James Roll for pretty much bringing up the whole series itself. I was just astonished at everything that I was able to learn about the Godzilla series itself. With all the films from 1954 to, at the time, 2004. Being the latest in the official Godzilla feature film franchise. But of course, I was also able to learn that after Final Wars, we had ourselves the always... Sunset on 3rd Street series, which of course featured the Godzilla character as a cameo appearance in the second film, that is, in 2007, a year prior to the Godzilla-thon being aired on YouTube. But of course, that was just totally fine, because after Final Wars had ended, after 2008, it would have been years before we were able to come across more Godzilla-related media, whether it be web series or otherwise we were able to get a pretty adult in tone series featuring Godzilla action figures called Monster Island Buddies. I feel like it was a great take on because the acronym relates to something else. The Men in Black. So I'd say that that was a pretty good approach there. But the reality of it is, it was just a pretty good web series. Back then. I don't know much about it today, but I'd say for sure that the Monster Island Buddies creators have had a lot of, well, directive input and a lot of succession. Especially following the many, 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 many episodes that had aired on YouTube from 2010 to around 2017 or 2018. But you know what? I could not only thank James Rolfe for being the creator of the Godzilla-thon and for ultimately hooking me in with the Godzilla universe. So this way, I'm now Kaiju Force Neo. And the fact is, is that, well, the business Kaiju Force Neo had got its name specifically from that. 
And it's not only because of James Rolfe, though, but it was also because of a few other people out there. Quite a few people, actually. Lots of people are big fans of the Godzilla universe, and I would kill to meet them in real life. So many people out there that are just big fans of the franchise itself. And there's just a lot more going on around it. But you know what? James Rolfe is a lot more than just that. We've also seen Rolfe for being the angry video game nerd. Since May of 2004. This was even before YouTube was even announced. PayPal employees were still around at the time in 2004. But of course a few of them left to make their own website. And that's how YouTube came to be for the first time. But you know what? Even after 2004, when AVGN first rose to prominence in April 2006, with the release of Episode 3 in the series, Karate Kid, and with others that came along the line in the year 2006, such as Master Chu and the Drunkard Who, Ninja Turtles, and Wally Bear and the No Gang, it was no surprise that AVGN was going to become one of the biggest net sensations in history. And so it has. Especially following the year 2006, with a lot of new episodes and the like. But the thing is, is that the first time I ever saw James Rolfe portraying the nerd on AVGN was around late 2010, when I saw the episode Action 52 on Nintendo Entertainment System. It was the first time that I ever witnessed a custom-made Nintendo system called the Nintoaster, which allows for Nintendo Entertainment System cartridges to work with it, no matter which of the types. Action 52 was one of a kind. It was definitely an episode of a lifetime, but it came along with a bit of a sequel episode, which centers on the Cheetah Men series. But after that, it got even better. Way better. Popularity started to pick up drastically, and the games, of course, were starting to become a bit worse for wear. Because by summer of 2018 was where I was able to come across an episode that would eventually be released on YouTube. Drake of the 99 Dragons. And months later, I would come across a few other episodes, including The Town With No Name. And eventually an episode in December 2018, which talks about the Home Alone games. And it actually features Macaulay Culkin. I mean, wow! I mean, that wasn't actually the first time that someone has actually made a guest appearance in AVGN. I mean, there were several other characters, like the lion from The, Wi the Wizard of Oz, as well as Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger, the Joker from the Batman series. There were a lot of characters from other franchises that have made it into AVGN as guest stars. But Macaulay Culkin was pretty much out of the water. Because it was one of the first times that AVGN has actually featured a real actor from a really popular series back in the day. And even more than that, it was a child actor. All grown up and better than ever. Pretty much. I mean, we've all known Macaulay Culkin for some of those awful things that have been done in 2012. But especially in the years after, Culkin has gotten a lot better. Has actually featured in some other forms of media. But of course, being that in late 2018, Culkin was a guest star in AVGM. That was a whole new paradigm shift. But just wait. Because it gets even better than that we were able to find even more guest stars throughout all of 2019. As a matter of fact, it would be a little while longer before I would check back on AVGN to see if there were new episodes. But by May of 2019, I had come across an episode that talks about a PlayStation game called Pepsi Man. And the amazing thing about it is that it actually stars Pepsi Man in there. I'm not joking. It's just a guy in his in a Zentai suit, but, you know, that's the Pepsi Man you can get in real life compared to what's on the game. And even better than that, though, was they actually brought up the actor from the game into the episode, Mike Butters. That is just amazing. I mean, I was kind of speechless at the time. Mike Butters first appeared in a Pepsi Man video game, and both of them show up in an AVGN episode just to review the game. That is just 
incredible. But hey, I'm not done there. Because there will be even more guest appearances from actual actors or anybody out there in general, we would eventually get Gilbert Gottfried. Yes. That amazing, talented individual with such an awesome voice out there plays a character known as Fred Fox. And I'm talking about the name, not the cuss word. Have you CHS? Gilbert Gottfried, though. Just wow. <sighs> but I am not done there. Because eventually, we would actually come across yet another popular figure. Seamus Blackley. The original inventor of the Xbox. Who actually gets featured in an episode that regards the game Jurassic Park Trespasser. Blackley is revealed to be one of the executive producers of the game, and is also revealed to be a scheming villain in the series, who traps James Rolfe on a private island, isolated from reality. It happens to trap James Rolfe on there because of, well, not accepting the fact that there are reviewers out there who are very angry about the game itself, and that, well, Blackley's team did work hard to make the game, after all. You had to work really hard just to make a game like that back then. Whereas today, you could take not as much time to make one, and even better, you probably wouldn't have to spend so much money or have a lot of hard work to put it together. I could kind of understand the comparison to Ark Survival Evolved. Those creators did work hard, but not quite as hard as they would have back in 1998. And you know what? Who knows? AVGN, of course, is going to continue getting better and better. We are going to get new episodes every month or so, but it all depends on what Cinemassacre itself is going to go through. Of course, we are getting a lot of new people added to the Cinemassacre crew, but you know what? There's a lot more to it than you could possibly ever imagine. So that's pretty much all that I have left to talk about that in general. James Rolf is definitely someone you could look up to any day. But if you want to see more, go down to my channel. Make sure that you like, subscribe, comment, follow me on social media, and stay on the Hollywood side.